it's gone. And in 30 to 35 minutes, little target two over here no is water. going to cease to exist. Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to explore this place. Hey guys, so this is the Titan II 9 megaton thermonuclear warhead. So now we're going 30 feet down underground into one of the silos. These are blast doors. This is a facility that was built and became operational in 1963. We are now 35 feet underground and we're in a three story building that is entirely underground. Above us is the cruise quarters. You saw that in the movie today. This is launch control here, and below us is an equipment room. So picture three floors in a bird cage. Floors are tied together. This missile is over here on the side of the deputy's console. They are too far apart for one person to turn both keys. They are spring-loaded. If you turn this one and then run over there, that one's gonna turn off. Now this is a no loan zone. We each know our own combination and we don't know the other person's combination. We don't tell anybody our combination. The message that just came in tells us which envelope to open. Let's say it's this one. We open the envelope, we pull out the card inside. There's five more characters inside. We compare those five characters which, with the next five characters in this message. If they agree, we know we have a valid order to launch our missile, and we know it came from the President of the United States. We're going to be turning to the right, and you're going to hold it, and you're going to wait for this first light to come on. Yeah, it's that way. Okay, this first light's going to be a green light. It's going to say launch enable. You're going to tell me when that light comes on. Okay, now, before we do this, I'm going to give you a countdown, a 3, 2, 1 turn, and I have to turn my key with you. But I want to summarize for everyone that because we got a valid order to launch, we know the time of the launch, it came with the order. We got a valid order to launch, we had our butterfly valve code, we entered it there. We know our valve's gonna open. We know our fuel and our oxidizer are gonna mix. So we got everything we need now. Okay, left hand on the key, Commander. Three, two, one, turn your key to the right and hold. Watch for the green light. Let go of your key. You have started a process that cannot be stopped. There is no oops button. First light that comes on says batteries activated. The batteries on board the missile are starting to charge. The process takes 28 seconds. The second light that comes on will say APS power, and that will tell us that the missile batteries are fully charged, and the missile is going to be on its own power, and it doesn't need electricity from us anymore. After that, we have silo saw. The silo door is starting to open. It's crossing the tipsy beam. The tipsy alarm sounds. The crew now knows that the silo door is open and ready. They couldn't hear it. They couldn't feel it. Next is guidance go. The missile's going to take over on its own guidance system. It will no longer accept any communications from the MAGAC here. Next, we're going to have a fire at the engine. Fire alarm sound. We know that our fuel and our oxidizer have mixed. The engines are firing, water's pouring into the bottom of the silo now, the missile's starting to rise, and it's out of the silo. We have liftoff. It's gone. And in 30 to 35 minutes, little target two over here no is water. going to cease to exist. Yeah. But your job's not done, Commander. You have to close your silo door because you never would have received an order to launch if we didn't have someone firing at us, this is not a first strike weapon, it's a retaliatory weapon. So you got that order and you say, we got incoming. So you close your silo door. Now your orders are to wait for further orders. And the Air Force gave you 30 days of food and water. And a little bit less than that of recirculated air. So at the end of this time, you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to stay down here and possibly suffocate with your crew? Or are you going to take our emergency exit and go topside and see what's left of the world. 
a very, very somber decision to make. But no commander ever had to make that decision because we never fired this weapon. Of our 54 sites, no one ever fired their missile. Why is that? Peace through deterrence. You heard it in the movie, and what does that mean? Let's say you have a missile. You're going to fire at me. But you say, wow, she's got a Titan II with a nine megaton bomb. If I fire at her, she's going to fire back at me. Mutual and we're assured destruction. Have mutually assured destruction. I remember that term from so, my boy. That's right. You don't forget something. Duck and like cover that. at school. Right. Get under your desk. Absolutely. Yep. So you change your mind and you don't fire your weapon. That's peace through deterrence. Really sounds pretty simple. And it worked. It worked for more than 20 years for us. So what we're going to do, Commander, is we're going to get out of the silo. We have this for you for pulling the blast door. And we have this for you, Bianca, for turning my key. Oh, it was a neat experience. Okay, as you're looking at the walls, you see gray panels, gray boxes. There are acoustic panels to help deaden the noise and the vibration breaks up during the launch sequence before it's out of the silo. Now, this is a one-time use silo and breaking up a missile that costs between two and three million dollars. Be a pretty bad day for somebody if we lost a missile before we got it out. We're going 100 feet, yeah, guys. we're going to level seven there. There's going to be two levels below us. But you can get a glimpse through this at some of the equipment that we're passing. You probably want to set your hard hats on the ground to make sure you don't drop them, because we wouldn't be able to recover them if we did. Gotcha, yeah. After you. This gives you a whole new perspective on it. Go ahead and walk up there. You're okay. safe. Just watch where you are. Wow. <laughs> that was kind of my reaction. And this is without the engines on it. They took the engines off and put them on display top side. Now the engine is bolted to this big silver ring with four explosive bolts. When the engine develops 77% of its power, those explosive bolts are fired. It takes it four seconds to clear the side, which is pretty good acceleration. And even with this antiquated technology, the first 33 missiles they built, they test fired 32 of them with a mission success rate of 93%. And does mission success mean they landed in the right Yes. 6,500 miles and land within half a mile. Wow. Because if, you, uh, if this was targeted as a ground burst where it would go off on impact, depending on the type of ground it hit, it would dig a hole four to 600 feet deep, half a mile wide. This is the shock isolation for the missile they were talking about is these big springs that go up the side there. That lets this whole thing wiggle in the silo a little bit. But that's not too good for uh, a launch. You want a stable platform. So these four hydraulic rings here lock into place to stabilize this. Now the exhaust from the engines are directed down to this level. And you'll see a concrete barrier down there, kind of a W shape, that deflects the exhaust oh, up the side of the silos. The side, yeah. Gosh. And those, that's how big the nozzles are that dump the water in there. As part of the launch sequence, it dumps 40,000 gallons of water in there. And the engines convert it to steam and absorb energy. That's how they get it out of the silo without vibrating itself to pieces. Level eight. Yeah, there's nothing on level eight that counts. This is probably the furthest down they go. They built this site in 29 months. They built all 54 sites in 36 months. And back where we started. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, it was so much fun. Those tours are like booked out. But we managed to... Oh my God, awesome experience.